Is this true? The breakthrough in the Chinese chip industry has caused anxiety in the West. According to information from Mobile China on December 6, Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, stated that Huawei is one of the very strong competitors of NVIDIA in the race to produce the best artificial intelligence chips. Just recently, both the Financial Times and Jensen Huang have sent strong signals, indicating that the rise of Chinese chips is fundamentally changing the world order. It's important to note that Huawei is currently on the rise and will continue to do so. According to the data, Huawei's shipment volume is projected to increase to 70 million units in 2024, and some foreign media even stated in their analysis reports that Huawei's shipment target for next year will be raised to 100 million units. What does this mean? In the first half of this year, China's mobile phone production reached 507 million units, with domestic market shipments totaling 124 million units during the same period. This clearly indicates the strong rise of Huawei's mobile phone business. It is worth mentioning that against the backdrop of Huawei's sudden rise in the mobile phone market, the Financial Times of the UK has conducted an in-depth analysis of the Kirin 9000's chip. They are very curious. What was the result of the analysis? Apart from the conclusion that Chinese chips have achieved technological breakthroughs, they are puzzled as to why the Kirin 9000's chip like magic, managed to bypass the technological barriers of the West. For a long time, the domestic market has been heavily reliant on chips. In recent years, chip imports have exceeded 400 billion US dollars, surpassing oil to become the number one import product. Especially in the mobile phone market, more than 100 kinds of mobile phone chips have a very small proportion of Chinese-made chips, such as radio frequency power amplifier chips, wireless network chips, and power management chips, which are almost all purchased from Qualcomm. Huawei has been in a three-year dilemma of chip shortages, mainly due to the inability to obtain high-end lithography machines to produce high-end chips. It is known that Shanghai Microelectronics once went to Europe to study relevant technologies and was once ridiculed by others, saying that even if they gave us the blueprints, we couldn't build lithography machines. Such heavy reliance on others not only hinders our independent research and development but also threatens China's information security. However, recently, our independently developed chips have frequently achieved remarkable results on the international stage, not only in the field of mobile phone chips but also in the area of automotive autonomous driving chips. Currently, the enthusiasm for independent semiconductor development is unprecedentedly high. Huawei has previously released patents related to EUV technology. Harbin Institute of Technology has made breakthroughs in EUV light source technology, and the Institute of Optics and Electronics under the Chinese Academy of Sciences has also made relevant breakthroughs. Undoubtedly, our domestic independently developed chips have reached a new height. Although the West may not fully understand the specific reasons for the rise of Chinese chips, it is widely recognized that the ascendancy of Chinese chips will change the global landscape. NVIDIA's CEO, Huang Renxuan, has issued a warning, stating that currently 50 companies in China are developing technologies to compete with NVIDIA's products. Export restrictions from the West will bring unforeseen consequences. In other words, Huang is well aware that former competitors are rapidly rising and this is all a result of the technological barriers set by the West. For example, Huawei's success in smartphone sales is attributed to the Kirin 9000's chip, and leveraging this momentum, they have begun laying the groundwork for crucial AI chips. According to reports, Huawei has recently collaborated extensively with Chinese internet companies such as Meituan, Tencent, and Baidu on the Ascend 910B chip, conducting related experiments. This signifies that Huawei's AI chips have transitioned directly from research and development to commercial use. Moreover, they are being applied by some of the most complex internet enterprises in China, covering various aspects of daily life, such as food delivery, ride hailing, and e-commerce. Personally, I believe this is a positive development and a significant step forward. Huawei has provided a world-class training ground for Ascend, 
and borrowing a phrase from NVIDIA's Huang Renchuan. Chinese chips are completing the closed loop from R&D to commercialization, a fact that the West cannot ignore. It is evident that China is steadily breaking through the technological barriers of the West. Creating a growing breach, much like opening a wound that will only widen. Huawei is a formidable opponent. This statement was made by NVIDIA's CEO, Huang Renxuan, who is also the head of one of the world's leading semiconductor companies. Those who follow the technology or hardware fields are likely familiar with him. Recently, the company even launched a so-called customized version of chips for the Chinese market, essentially a lower-spec version. By introducing this Chinese special edition chip, it indicates their unwillingness to abandon the Chinese market while also acknowledging that due to you. S. Entity list sanctions, they cannot sell the best and most advanced chips to China, including the future 4090 for gaming. This move is a response to the circumstances at hand. Looking back at today, Huang Renchuan stated that Huawei is a formidable opponent, saying, in the competition of AI chips, Huawei is one of NVIDIA's very powerful competitors. In fact, Huawei has already become a giant in the Chinese chip industry. This year, with an advanced domestically produced smartphone processor, it has once again become the focus of attention, particularly with the Kirin 9000 in the Mate 60. Across the Pacific, these business elites and technology company executives have a clear understanding of the situation. It's no wonder that the United States is officially sanctioning and attempting to block China. The reason is quite simple, it's shaking up what? It's shaking their interests, shaking their foundation. As Mr. Ren Zhengfei said more than 10 years ago, after 20 years of semiconductor industry development, China will inevitably meet the United States at the top of the mountain, and that's when the knives will be out. More than 10 years ago, Mr. Ren already had this awareness and plan, and as expected, the United States has blocked Huawei and sanctioned almost all of China's semiconductor industry. Now the world has formed two semiconductor industry chains, two different patterns. One chain is dominated by the West, and the other is dominated by the East, referring to China. Among the most important aspects, we can also see Mr. Ren Zhengfei's plan from more than 10 years ago. Now, Huawei is full of talent, and it's inevitable that it has developed to such a scale. Let me briefly summarize the three major areas where Huawei is far ahead. In the civilian consumer level accessible in China, there are three major areas. The first is communication capabilities, such as mobile communication and enterprise-level servers, right? The Mate 60 and Global Enterprise Level Server Hardware are all ranked in the top three globally, demonstrating real strength. The second area is the automotive field. With AI driving and the vehicle system, any company can directly purchase from Huawei. Don't bother developing your own laser radar or autonomous driving. Huawei's intelligent driving provides a comprehensive supply chain service from software to hardware. Now. Car manufacturers can just use it directly, it's affordable, easy to use, and worry-free. The third area is the most core and crucial chips, such as the Kirin 9000, which is self-developed and has achieved cutting-edge technology. In addition to manufacturing these chips, Huawei also provides them to companies like Baidu and 360, meeting the hardware needs of these internet companies for AI and artificial intelligence. Speaking of this point about chips, everyone still hasn't figured it out, and it's still in a state of secrecy. Who actually produces these chips? The most concerning aspects like lithography machines and chip manufacturing have not disclosed any information and are still almost completely confidential. What does this indicate? It indicates that this is a crucial national asset with considerations involved. At the same time, it also tells domestic companies in need of chips that Huawei is backing them up, so they don't need to fear being blocked by the United States. It also sends a message to the US, telling them not to push too hard or extort China. Because now, China can independently develop its own chips. So, combining this with what Huang Renchuan, the boss of NVIDIA, said today, 
it's clear that they have been in direct competition for five or six years. In two aspects, first in the AI chip field, both Huawei and NVIDIA are global leaders in AI chip manufacturing. And there is competition between the two in this area. Huawei has made many breakthroughs in AI chip technology, while NVIDIA holds a dominant position in the AI chip market. Seeing new players enter the field and potentially take a share of the market, it is inevitable that there will be suppression and competition. The second aspect is in the cloud services field. Huawei has its own cloud services, especially for domestic enterprises and some special departments, which are inseparable from the support of hardware chips and servers. Meanwhile, NVIDIA collaborates with major cloud service providers to offer so-called more efficient GPUs, chip servers, and more, thus competing with Huawei in the cloud services market. In conclusion, Huawei and NVIDIA compete in multiple areas such as AI chips and cloud services. Based on these points, it is now not just a matter of one tech company competing or confronting another in the business world but rather a competition between two different factions within the semiconductor industry chain. Technology, communication, hardware, and chips, whoever controls these will have the future, the initiative, and the ability to benefit from the distribution of global wealth, even in certain military fields, such as the gains made in areas like drones and Xiaomi's communication technologies. Therefore, the current semiconductor industry is far ahead, overcoming the challenges of being blocked, and achieving such a great accomplishment, which is no less than the achievement of the two bombs, one satellite in the last century, 